Alright guys, so in the last video that I uploaded, we looked a little bit at some of the more uncommon weapons to use with the strength build. We looked at the Drang Hammer, the Cathedral, Great Sword, and the Gundir's Halberg. Now, out of those three weapons, um, it was just a mini montage where I showed some uh, gameplay. The Drang Hammers and the Cathedral Great Sword, they weren't really all that good in my opinion. Um, if you're going to be using a strength build, um, and again I've refined this build, I'll link it in the description, you can click the link in the annotation or in the uh, card in the upper right hand corner to see the actual build um, or the refinements of the build that we've made. But if you're going to use a strength build, the main weapons that you're going to be able to use uh, most effectively with this build is the Fume Ultra Greatsword and the Gundir's Halberg. Um, the Yorm Hammer is also good, but those are the two main weapons that really benefit the most I think from having a lot of strength versus just going with a standard quality build. Um, I have done a dedicated video for the Fume Ultra Great Sword, showcasing um, its ability, talking about its pros, why it's good, why it has advantages. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys just a little bit more PvP and break it down just a little bit more. Um, because this is essentially why you would want to run a strength build over a quality build. Um, in my opinion, the quality build is still the better build. But the strength build gives you access to these two weapons, which you wouldn't normally use in a quality build, so to speak. Um, at least not in the quality build that I like to use. Um, so here you can see that even when you face off against people um, that really like to dodge, uh, you can see that this guy that I'm fighting right now, I actually do a rematch with him a little bit later on in the video. He was actually quite a good challenge. Um, props to him. Um, I forget his name. I can see it there, but can't make it out. It's like wash washing level 100 or something. Washington level. I don't know. But um, props to you, dude. You gave me some good matches. Um, and one of the main things or one of the main weaknesses of using heavy weapons is that if somebody can dodge R1 or dodge uh, the R1 attack really well, it's a lot harder to hit them. And this guy really showcased how hard it could be to really hit somebody. Um, but with the right playstyle, you can definitely um, kind of bait them because this is where like the next level of PvP strategy comes into play. Because I've discussed before about how ultra weapons um, like the ultra curved great swords or I think they're just called Curved Great Swords, but the Ultra Great Sword, the Curved Great Swords, um, the Great Hammer, stuff like that, they deal a lot of damage, they are unparryable, but they're kind of slow. Um, you can catch enemies who like to trade, but when you play more intelligent players, you definitely have to mix up your playstyle. You can't just play that pure rushdown game that I usually like to play. It does work to some degree, but as you can see here, I'm on my kind of last hit. So is he, to be fair. But um, I played a little over over aggressive and I got punished for it. Um, and now you can see that we're both kind of in that like really heightened um, dodge roll mode and we're both trying to catch each other. He's trying to approach me, run at me, dodge my attacks and you can see here he's trying to punish my R1s. Now I'm trying to space them out. You can see here that I'm, I'm doing the R1s at a kind of a distance anticipating him running at me because I can kind of tell he's running around and there you go. I was able to finally catch him with the R2. Um, because I could tell his kind of strategy was run around, dodge my attack, or try to bait out my attack, and then come in and hit me when I'm recovering. But, I mean, again, you're going to kind of have to play that chess game with your opponent to kind of bait them into thinking they can attack. And this is why you can sometimes catch people when you're throwing those throwing knives. They think that they can punish you, but you can actually whip out an attack really quickly after you throw that throwing knife and uh, punish your opponent. So um, that is something um, if people were struggling with Ultra Great Swords beating smaller weapons or beating people that, that are really good at rolling and such um, or rolling through all of your R1s or being really reactive on the playstyle, you're just going to have to shift up your tactics and it's going to take some practice for sure. It's not something you can really um, just do and expect to win and if you rush down or be overly aggressive, smart players will definitely pick up on that and you'll have to adjust your tactics or else you will definitely be punished. Um, in this battle, you can see again, I'm whipping out stomps um, just to scare him, just to keep him on, on the front foot. Not doing the stomp attack, but following up with the um, upward swing, which is just a standard R1 after the, after the stomp. Um, that's usually a good alternative option to try to catch somebody. Um, but again, if somebody's really agile, and I've discussed this with the katana before, um, when you're using a katana, you have to go in for the poke and be really agile, and he was doing that, so props to him um, for you know doing relatively well with the katana. But one of the weaknesses is that once you commit to something with the katana, um, if I'm already coming out with my attack or I can kind of react to it, 
if you can't recover in time to roll away, I'm going to hit you. And that's how I ended up catching him. Once I saw him go, go into that hold stance, I know that he can't parry my Ultra Great Sword. So he's not going to whip out the R2. He's going to have to either go for the R1, in which case I'll trade and come out on top. Or he's going to have to try to roll away, but it was too late for him and we ended up catching him. Um, this battle, just again, up against another Ultra Great Sword. Um, this, when, when you go against um, Ultra Great Sword against Ultra Great Sword, the fume the Fume Sword will have the advantage. Um, not really in, in terms of damage, but in terms of reach. Um, you will definitely be able to poke out opponents when they can't reach you. You have the advantage with the Rolling R1. You have the advantage with the Overhead Swing um, reaching further. And you have the advantage with those Long Poking R2s. As you can see, that we did a lot more damage to him than he did to us. So the trading mentality gets brought back into play here. Um, when you're when you're going up against another ultra great sword with the fume ultra great sword so it's one of the major benefits of using the strength build is that it does in my opinion counteract other ultra great swords quite well um and it can help you uh outplay a, a quality build for example if you guys watched any of my other videos you know that i think my quality build is probably one of the best builds in the game um it's it's really good because it has access to a lot of different weapons but one of the main weapons that I use and I find really good in this game, if not the best right now, um, is the Lothric Ultra Greatsword. And uh, the Fume Sword technically should, on paper, theoretically in my opinion, beat it just because um, you can out-trade it, you can out-poke it. So, you know, if, as long as you're not getting comboed, um, or even if you are getting comboed, you should at the very least come out with a trade. Um, and there's even the, the potential for you to kind of, again, out-poke those Ultra Greatswords, which is why it's good. Um, here against a great sword, I mean, people aren't really going to do too much damage. Great swords in general aren't that good, so you know you're going to be able to beat those quite easily most of the time. Again, if you're facing somebody who's really good at rolling, you're going to have to really um, adjust your playstyle. And this is the second round between me and that washing pole guy, Washington. I do apologize. I know his name is on the screen, but I'm watching the video and it's like really small, so that I can see the recording. So I can't actually make out his name. So I do apologize. Um, but uh, this match actually goes on for quite a while and I didn't actually know that this was the same dude until I rendered the video and I went back and I'm like, wait a minute, didn't I fight this guy? And then I'm watching the video now and I realize that, yeah, I actually fought him earlier and we had that really close match. So this guy actually, you know, he knew how I played, I guess, to some degree. We had one match earlier and this is the rematch. And I'm all for that. I'm all for giving people the rematch. Um, you know, if I beat them or if they beat me, I obviously would want a rematch. Um, because, I mean, a lot of the time I'm, I'm making... The matches that I do lose, um, it's either to something like a parry, which, you know, you can't help and you're using a weapon that can be parried. Um, you can dodge. I mean, I don't lose to parries that often, but when I do get parried, usually um, I'm going to end up losing. But I'm pretty good at baiting the parries. If you guys have watched my other videos, I've outlined strategies for that. Nonetheless, though... Um, the matches that I do lose, uh, it's mostly just because of one stupid mistake and it usually ends up being a really close match. Even some of the matches that I win against good players end up being really close matches and that's how that's how you know um, that you and your opponent are kind of on the same wavelength, which I really like. Um, I think that's one thing in this game that really uh, makes it... There's not too many things in my opinion that make it better than Dark Souls 2, but I like that aspect of the game that you can have those really close matches where you start to be on edge with you and your opponent. Because in Dark Souls 2, usually you would just be levels ahead of your opponent because your build was either that much better or, you know, you just had to master a specific kind of skill. Like, usually the dodge rolling. Um, and there were obvious top tier weapons in that game that would just outreach and outpoke um, everything else, like the paid spear and stuff. So, this game, it does have some pros. I mean, in my opinion, I still like Dark Souls 2 PvP just because it had more build variety. But we are learning new stuff about this game. There is still changes to come, DLC to come, and we'll see how that plays out. Um, but in this matchup, you can see here that this guy is just dodging everything and he is once again going back to that strategy of just trying to outrun my pokes and then come in for the punish. Um, whenever I, sh I swing, you see him swinging and I was able to catch him after that long sequence where I wasn't able to hit him for a while. After I did a stomp and then he kind of moved away and then I didn't follow up with the attack but I actually rolled our wand on him and caught him there. Um, so this is actually a really close match and it does get a bit dragged out here. He catches me. I didn't roll fast enough um, I remember when I got hit there and I was like I pressed circle But again, you have to kind of uh, anticipate a little bit better if you want to outroll those really fast running attacks So keep that in mind um, if, if you see an enemy running at you just be prepared because 
if they end up swinging, obviously it's going to come out really fast, right? I mean, the katana is the perfect ex uh, example of that. I'm sure everybody has at one point or another been hit by a running R1 with a katana, and you guys know how fast that can be. Um, some running attacks can be fairly easy to see and parry, don't get me wrong, especially when they're heavier weapons, um, or the person's coming at you from a longer distance. But uh, when it comes to the two-handed weapons uh, that are heavy, you can't parry them, obviously, so you have to play a little bit different. So we ended up catching him out there, so really, really good props to that dude. Um, he gave us a really good fight, and the Fumal Great Greatsword, those six matches that we played were the only six that we played with it for this video, and we ended up winning all six. So um, that should just show you guys how effective the Fumal Great Greatsword can be um, if you use the right strategy with it. Um, now, I've switched over to the Gundyr's Halberd here, and you do have to be a little bit careful with the running R, uh, L1, sorry, uh, which is, or sorry, the running R2, which is the weapon art. Um, it is very easy to parry, and the run is actually kind of slow, especially when you do it from a distance. As you can see here, this guy has switched into parry mode, but like I've said many times, um, we're usually decent at reading parries. I did lose two matches um, that I can remember with this uh, halberd, just because I was trying to get some footage of me finishing people off with the running attack. And uh, both, the, both the losses were to parries because the running attack was parried. Um, but I do end up getting it off quite a few times here um, in normal matches. And there is not necessarily a science, but as you can see here, I did it when I was really close to the guy and it threw off his parry. He parried way too early um, because the attack does have startup. And when you do it really close to somebody, um, it does kind of throw off their timing a little bit. And... It, and again, if you can actually catch them missing the parry, you're going to hit them with every single forward strike of the halberd. And then, I mean, I messed up my follow-up R2. Um, as you can see there, the follow-up R2, 422 damage, it does a lot of damage. Um, if you can hit somebody with the forward thrust L2 into the R2 follow-up, it's going to do a ton of damage if you hit them with every hit. So doing it at really close range um, can really help confuse people with the timing. It's one of the strategies that I like to use with, with actually pretty good success. Um, the two that I lost where I did it far away from uh, somebody was actually uh, easy to parry, but when you do it up close, it's actually a lot harder. And that last match, again, you can see we were we easily punished somebody that um, kind of overcommitted with the uh, dual katanas, and we did a ton of damage, finishing him off, finishing him off with just one straight weapon art. Um, and again, I am playing a little bit... Um, a little bit more on the liberal side with the weapon art. You usually wouldn't want to bust it out as much as I probably do. Um, just keep it. I, I would like. I would, I would prefer to keep it as kind of like that surprise attack. Make people kind of forget about it, and then just whip it out when they least expect it. Um, and then you can usually catch somebody for some massive damage. There you can see there. I opted for the trade. Ended up catching him. He caught us too with his uh, upward swing. So we did take a lot of damage, but I think we more or less came on on top in that trade. Um, so we are in the life lead right now, and this guy has to play catch up. Obviously, he's trying to fish out the parry, and here's an example. He's rolling away. He missed time the parry, and we were still able to do a ton of damage. Unfortunately, when you parry, and even if you miss the parry, you still end up taking reduced damage for some reason. I guess from software, I really wanted this game to be parry heavy, which I personally am not a fan of. I've already voiced this before. Um, but it is what it is, it's in the game, and it's just something um, that you have to deal with. And I mean, you can whip it out if you want to. Um, I usually don't like to parry, but I mean, when you're using some of the weaker or smaller weapons, um, you know, sometimes you have to do that in order to make those weapons a little bit more viable. And we were able to finish off that opponent with the running um, L2 attack or the weapon art, just because we were able to chase him down with it, which made it a little easier. And it is a good finisher to some degree, but again, you do have to be careful when you see enemies trying to parry. Here you can see this guy totally mistimed the roll or we were still able to catch him with the follow-up R2 and as a result we just annihilated him super quick. That R2 follow-up does so much damage with this weapon which is why I said it's one of the weapons that you would want to make a strength build for. Like this is one of the weapons that you definitely benefit from that no other like class can really use other than a strength class because you're going to get the most damage out of this weapon uh, with a strength build. You're not going to get the most damage out of it with a quality build. Um, it's still kind of effective, but I would just use a regular glaive on a quality build. But on a strength build, um, yeah, you can definitely do some heavy damage with this uh, with this weapon for sure. Um, and here we're going up against the Fume Ultra Great Sword. This is the last weapon. And as you can see here, um, you can chase people down, play aggressive. Um, the weapon does have a bit of hyper armor, so you can attack through some attacks to some degree. 
Um, and here we're gonna easily chase this guy down because we knew he used up all his stamina. But there you go, easy to punish people with as well. Um, great, great way to finish them off. But that is the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. More videos coming, guys. Thanks for watching. Quantum is out.